Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Now, before we start the service, because I don't want to do this when the service starts, do we want a PG-rated spiel, or do we want a X-rated spiel? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That was a joke. So, for those of you that are visiting us this evening, while we have more people from your class than I think we've ever had, I must have been really great yesterday. Just kidding. So, uh, I'm Rabbi Aaron Box, and I'd like to welcome all of you to Temple Beth Shalom. Uh, tonight's Friday night Shabbat service is going to be different from every other Shabbat service that we have. Although all of our Shabbat services, I try to make things different with different melodies, different songs, different readings. Purim is, Purim Shabbat is just a whole other thing. So, I don't dress like this normally. Believe it, or, believe it or not, I know, you're so surprised. This is conservative. <laughs> Jewish? No. Um, but Purim is supposed to lehafoch. It's supposed to flip upside down our ideas. In Judaism, one of the things that we're taught is we're not supposed to embarrass someone. Embarrassing someone is equivalent to killing someone. But on Purim... We dress in ridiculous costumes, and we want to get laughed at. That's just one example of how we flip things around. Men wear women's clothing and vice versa sometimes uh, on Purim. I used to wear a dress on Purim every year. Don't do that anymore. Although I got really good at high heels. But also, the service is different. We begin at the end of the service, and we move backwards. So we close the service at the beginning, and then we end the service, and then we begin the service at the end. That's a, that's a mouthful. So the service tonight is going to be about 15 or 20 minutes of liturgy, and then there will be a break. And we'll go in, uh, and that, at that moment, if you are here for morning purposes, if you are here to, to get, need the support of the congregation, it's at that moment that we're going to turn silly, so we, we break. And if people want to leave because they are not in the mood for silliness for whatever reason, then it's at, at that point you're given the opportunity to, to leave. And then no one says anything. A lot of times mourners don't want to party. And so we give them the opportunity to be here for the service they need, and then they can leave and not be offended by the people, the rest of us who party. Um, sometimes people will drink. During services, um, it, we try to be a little bit uh, conspicuous about it. Like you're not going to see people like just chugging beers. But sometimes people will have a flask or a water bottle that doesn't have water in it. Um, on Purim, it's encouraged for us to drink and be merry. Now, there's a very common misunderstanding about Purim. We are not commanded to get drunk and be ridiculously crazy. That's what a lot of people teach. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to drink enough you, that you can't tell the difference between Mordechai and Esther. <laughs> so it may not be a lot for some people, Julie. So it's, it's, it's really uh, my first Purim sh uh, Friday night service as a rabbi. Uh, I did not have much to drink. I think I had maybe... a maybe two or three drinks and a shot. But the congregants, it, over like three hours, people, it wasn't like in ten minutes. But this was an adult-only service. And the members of the, chur of the church, the members of the synagogue that were there that night refused to let me drive home. I was completely sober. And I lived a mile away from the temple. So what did I do? I called Bacha and she came and picked me up and then the next day I went and got in my car. But I don't, so I don't drink on Purim anymore because I don't want people to think that I am in any way, shape, or form unable to, to perform the functions that I need to do as a human being. However, if you are someone that wants to have a little fun on, on, on uh, Purim, by all means, as long as you're of age. I'm looking at you, college students. <laughs> um, okay. The only thing that we're going to do at the beginning of the service, which we normally do at the beginning of the service, is we're going to go around and we're going to give 
the opportunity for people to talk about anniversaries, birthdays, good things that have happened in their lives over the past week. So we'll start with that like we always do so that people who are here can do that. Yes, Julie. Come on. I wait for that day. <laughs> yes, sir. So I don't know if you heard, but uh, Larry, uh, and I, I'm saying this only because you said it. Uh, Larry has reported that Rita is in Advent Hospital. She's in room 619. And uh, she is getting uh, treatment that she needs, and she's going to get an in, uh, a very um, mildly invasive procedure that will help her tremendously with her breath and be able to get back to normalcy as soon as possible. So we're very thankful that that is. And I, I visited her this afternoon with, with Bacha, so it was nice to be with her. Because I don't listen to rules. People say, don't go visit. I don't listen. Uh, yes, uh, wait, I'm going to go one, two, three. So, die. What took him so li so long? <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's tremendous news. Very good to hear. Lauren? Oh, wow. Which which son? What what does he what is what does he play? Rugby. Oh wow. All right. No broken bones for sure. We've had too many of broken bones in this congregation in the last couple of weeks. Speaking of that, Betsy. I mean, dislocated. Okay, fine. You look great, by the way. Your youngest child. Oh, cool. Although I'm sure it was wonderful being with your family, I'm certain that you enjoy the weather here much better than in Denver right now. <laughs> All I know is that my flight from Philadelphia to, Orla to Orlando was delayed because there were 10 inches of snow in Denver. I don't know how that works, but. Wow. That's why we live in Florida, folks. Anybody? Uh, yes, Amy. I know that I'm partially biased, but I agree it was a wonderful wedding. The rabbi was okay. Anybody else? Yes, Barbara? Who knew? Who knew? Just in case you guys are unaware, if you go on a cruise and you get sick on the cruise, sometimes you have to go spend the night or several nights or longer in hospitals uh, in strange countries. And it happened to two of our congregants in the last few weeks. And thank God they were... Well, same cru I wasn't going to speak. I, I wasn't going to give any specifics. It was the same cruise. Thank God for Susan Bernstein, who was able to be mom for everyone. And uh, maybe you should stay away from that cruise line. Ever? All right. We we do not we do not uh, advertise or de-advertise any cruise lines. 
Anybody else? Yes, Bacha. Okay, we're going to shift gears now, and we're going to start our service with uh, Mourner's Kaddish, which is on page 294. This Shabbat, uh, the congregation commemorates the yard sites, the death anniversaries of Mitchell Kupperberg, Joseph Steinman, Kenneth Paul Weinstock, Dinah Weintraub, Leona Bernstein, mother of Sharon Lawson, mother of Marlies Bernstein, Rachel Sharangos, mother of Gail Sharangos, Norma Silverstein, mother of Steve Silver, Max Stern, father of Ruth Stern, David Schwartz, remembered by Amy L. Schwartz and Susan Schwartz, Matilda Kupperberg, Sophie Cluck, George Barron, the father of Michael Barron, Bruce Peters, brother of Christine Swit. And we are still in Shloshim for Gene Kincaid. If there's another name that you'd like to add in our prayers of memory this evening, please raise your hand. I invite you to rise as a congregation as we recite the words of Mourner's Kaddish. Yit Gadal v'yit Kadash Shemei Rabbah V'yalma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute V'chayechon v'yomechon Ubechaye de Kolbe Israel, Baagala, Bisman, Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shme, Rabba, Mivarach, Leolam, Ulo, Meal Maya. Yit Barach, Vishtabach, Viet Paar, Viet Ramam, Viet Nase. Viet Adar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shme de Kurisha, Brehu. Leela, Min Kol, Berchata, Vashirata. Tush Bechata, Venechemata. Da Amiran me alma vimru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, vechaim alenu vel ko Israel, vimru, amen. O se shalom bim ramav, uya se shalom, alenu vel ko Israel, vimru, amen. Zichronam li vracha, may all their memories be for a blessing as we say together, amen. And while you're still standing, I'd like to invite the children up to the bima to open up the ark doors. And we turn back in our prayer books to page 282 for Alenu. Go. Go. Alenu l'shabeach l'adon hakol l'atet gedula l'yotzer breshit Shelo asanu ki goye haratzot, velo samanu ki mishpechot hadama. Shelo sam chelkenu kahem, vego raleinu kechol hamonam. Fanachnu koreim, umishtachavim umodim. Lifne melech, malche hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu. 287. Vene al kol haaret. Bayom hahu, bayom hahu. Ye Adonai Echad Ushemo 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 Echad Please be seated. We turn back in our prayer books to page 253. Every Friday night since October 7th, we have recited the names of Israeli soldiers or soldiers who are fighting in the IDF right now for the freedom of Israel as a country. 
the people of Israel to live in freedom. We say the names Yosef, Shlomo, Yishai, Yotam, Amichai, Ben Rochel, Tamar, Ophir Avid, Avi Prager, Daniel Kaufman, Hanan Zanger, Tom Heffer, Yuval Zanger, Itamar Golan, Hadar Kirsch, Gal Cohen, Hezi Gilboa, Asher Katz, Roy Neer, Erez Eshel, Nadav Yakir, Ori Schneider, Roy Ashkenazi, Matan Pedro, Omer Nutra, who was taken hostage, Shai Shupak, David Avidan, Shachar Sonego, Shimon Sonego. If there is a name of a soldier or someone fighting in the IDF right now that you'd like to add to our prayers, please raise your hand. We add to those names our prayers of healing for Steve Jacobson, Janet Weiner, Judy, Judy Eber, who continues to get better and better. Stan Webman, Barbara B. Adler, who is back. Joan Brand, Betsy Brody, Rita Singer, Larry Handelman, Susan DiPaolo, Rob Price, Linda Donaldson, and Jay Christman and Janet Christman. If there is a name you'd like to add for our prayers of healing this Shabbat, please raise your hand. Oh, sorry, your hand was your hand was so low. Page two hundred fifty-three. Mi shebeirach avoteinu May the source of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Mi sheberach imoteinu mekor habracha laavoteinu. Bless those in need of healing with refuah shlema, the renewal of body the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. We turn back in our prayer books to page 62, and we sing our song for peace. O say shalom bimromav, Uya se shalom aleinu, ve al kol Yisrael, ve imru, ve imru, amen. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu, ve al kol Yisrael, ya se shalom. Ya se shalom, shalom aleinu, ve'al kol Yisrael. I invite you to please rise, turn back in your prayer books to page 46 for the tefillah, which we will not be doing backwards. Adonai sefai taitiv tach, Ufi agite hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. 
Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu v'elohei avoteinu v'imoteinu, Eloheinu Avraham, Eloheinu Yitzchak, v'elohei Yaakov, Eloheinu Sarah, Eloheinu Rivka, Eloheinu Rachel, v'elohei Leah. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanora, el el yon, gomel chasadim tovim, v'konei ha'kol, v'zocher chastei avot v'imahot, v'mevi ge'ula livnei v'neihem, l'ma'an sh'mo b'ahava. Melech Ozer Umoshia Umagain Baruch Ata Adonai Magain Avraham Vezrat Sarah Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai Mechaye Hakol Ata Rav Lehoshia Mashiv HaRuach Umorid HaGashem Mechalkel chayim bechesed, mechaye hakol berachamim rabim. So mech noflim verofe cholim, umatir asurim, umekayem emunato, lishay neyafar. Mi chamo chabal givurot, umi do melach, melech me mi tu mechaye, umats mi ach yeshua, veneman atal hachayot hakol, baruch ata adonai, mechaye hakol. Ata kadosh v'shim cha kadosh v'kadoshim b'chol yom yehalelu chasela Baruch ata Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh We remain standing and we turn to page 34 in our Siddur. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Hashem, Kevod Malchuto, Le'olam Va'el. We remain standing and we turn back in our prayer books to page 28 for the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed And now you may be seated. I'd like to invite Julie Rocklin up to our bima. We turn back in our prayer books to page two as we begin our Shabbat service with the lighting of the Shabbos candles. Begin. Oh, you didn't think it was going to be that easy. I don't think the amount of fire matters. Is it good that bad that it's bad? not Julie, it happens every week. No, I mean is it a bad that the candle No, I think it's right underneath the air. So how's by you? 
Do you know that in order to move a table in a synagogue, you need to have four different congregational meetings, and in each meeting you have to have a, a yes vote of 75%, and it takes three hours to have the conversation about why it is tradition that we leave it and why it is new tradition to move it. There is no why can't we just in Judaism. <laughs> Trust me. Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher gidishanu b'mitzvotav yitzivanu yitner shel shabbat. Amen. Amen. I received an email this week from uh, a colleague of mine in California who has a congregant, believe it or not, who disagreed with him about something. And I know it's... Wait, I haven't even gotten to the joke part yet. And in the email, the congregant said, now the rabbi of this congregation has been there for 22 years. He's not like new. And he said to the rabbi, you know, the tradition at this temple has always been dot, dot, dot. This congregant's only been in the congregation for 10 years. The rabbi's been there for 22 years. And the rabbi's response to this congregant was, Every tradition begins anew, somewhere. And unless we are willing to try new things in different times, we'll never be new. We'll stay old, and we'll get old, and we'll remain old. The congregant wrote back, I don't understand your email. Are you trying to tell me a story? At which point the rabbi wrote back and said, Shalom. And that was the end of that conversation. Because nothing is easy and everything is easy. And nothing is hard and everything is hard. Debbie's very innocent question of moving one table from here to there. Oh, sorry, it was Emily. I, I, I heard it was free. You should know better. You've been at this congregation for how many years? Anyway, Emily's very innocent question about moving a table. I, watch, watch what will happen. I'm going to come in the office on Tuesday. And I'm going to move that table over here. And then the next time that Dale has to come up and sing, she's going to say, why would you put a table in front of me? <laughs> and I'm going to go, I don't know. I didn't do it. It is now my pleasure to invite one of our board members up, Naomi Berman, who will uh, give us a few announcements. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. Uh, Hebrew 101 will begin again on April 2nd. There are still some seats available. Uh, Sign-ups in the lobby. Passover begins on April 22nd. For those of you who are interested, Publix and Canopy Oaks is well stocked. They have an entire aisle of Passover foods this year. Well, not only that, but a couple of the women from Sisterhood went in the fall and met with the grocery manager. And after a long discussion, he ordered everything that was available to him for Passover. And how, it, and but how much, of that, how much of that kosher Passover stuff is actually kosher for Passover? All of it. Oh, that's, that's, all, that's there. They, I love they seeing have matzo the that's not kosher for Passover. They have, that's, on the, that's in the regular aisle. This is all the kosher for Passover stuff in this particular place. They even have the yellow-capped Coke. So uh, please, please do your shopping if you are going to do Passover food shopping in Publix at Canopy Oaks because if we clean the shelves, we'll get it again next year. So please uh, make it your business. If it's a special trip, thank you very much. If you do it during a regular shopping trip, thank you also. Uh, we are in need of sponsors for interfaith dinners for July and September to December. And some of you may be traveling during some of that time. Please, it's the first Wednesday of every month. So please... Um, see Betsy also to pick one of the months that, that is needed. Um, 
There are still some places available for the rabbi and Vacha's trip to Israel, November 6th to the 16th. Please see them. Please volunteer for one of our temple committees, or if you think there's a need where none yet exists, please let one of the board members know. And like the rabbi said, it will take several board meetings to make some things happen. But it will happen. It, it will happen. That, um, if Debbie Johnson doesn't get to you about Bema Flowers, please call her. <laughs> Debbie's right up front here. Um, uh, Sunday, April 14th at 1 o'clock, there is going to be an update on the situation and life in Israel as it is today. The rabbi is sponsoring this program and the person on Zoom will, is in Israel is also going to be the tour guide for the trip as I understand, possibly. Okay, okay. Um, also on Sunday, April 14th, is the next Sisterhood General Meeting, and that will begin at 2.30 to allow people to attend this uh, update. And we will be having an accessory sale. A um, email went out on that, so start putting your things together, and please have small bills for that. The Judaica shop is already stocked for Passover, or will be shortly. Please see Rochelle Brownman and or Jackie Kokut to do that. This week's Oneg Shabbat is sponsored by the Ritual Committee and the Board, and Beamer Flowers is sponsored by Sisterhood. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yes, for the, uh, for the April 14th, 1 o'clock uh, 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 conversation over Zoom, um, yes, it is the tour guide that's leading us in Israel, but really it's not just for people who want to go to Israel. It's anybody who wants to hear about what's how life is like in Israel right now um, from uh, an American who made Aliyah, so she has perfectly good and understandable English, and she's wonderful. Anybody's invited. Uh, if you have member friends who are members of the church that you think would be interested, please invite them as well. We really want to... Uh, give people the opportunity to hear about what's going on in Israel. And this the last thing I want to say before we move to the next section of our service is uh, if you want to buy um, Passover Seder tickets, you can go to our website, jewishocala.com, click on the section that says donate, as if you're donating to one of our important causes, and in the, f in the what is it for box, just put Passover Seder tickets. And you can just do that. It's very simple. It takes like three clicks. And it's so much easier than, because then you'll be assured that the money will go to the right place and you'll have tickets waiting for you. If you have any questions about that, you can either see me or Mark, the two webmasters for the temple, and we'll be happy to help you with that. So now, as we move and transition to the next part of our service, I'd like to invite our extraordinarily wonderful Andrea Caulfield up. Uh, I am going to read the blessing before the Megit reading of the Megillah. She is going to read some of the Megillah, but not the not the whole Megillah. But I'm bump. And then after she's done reading her portion of the Megillah, I'm going to invite up our uh, members of the Purim spiel, and I will invite them up by name and character name, so you'll see who's in our play. And when the play is done, I will then conclude the blessings after the reading. So. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kedishanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu al mikra megillah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam she'asa nisim l'avotenu b'ayamim ha'hem b'zman hazeh. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam she'chianu v'kimanu v'higianu l'zman hazeh. And if that means in English. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his, mitzvah, with his commandments and commanded us concerning the reading of the Megillah. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who performed miracles for our fathers and mothers in days of old at this season. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life, has preserved us, and has enabled us to reach this season. Take it away, Andrea. Bayomer, Lahabi, 
את ספר הזיכרונות, דברי הימים, ויהיו נקעים לפני המלך, וימצא הסוג אשר הגיד מרדכי על בקען על בתרש, שני שרישי המלך, משומרי הסף. אשר ביקשו לשלוח יד במלך אחשוורוש. ויאמר המלך, מה נעשה יקר וגדולה למרדכי על זה. ויאמרו נערי המלך משרתיו, לא נעשה עמו דבר. ויאמר המלך מי בחצר והמן. בא לחצר בית המלך החיד שנה לאמור למלך לתלות את מרדכי על העץ אשר הכינו. ויאמר הוא נערי המלך אליו, הנה הרן. עומד בחצר, ויאמר המלך יבוא, ויבוא המן. ויאמר לו המלך, מה לעשות בית אשר המלך חפץ בקרבו? ויאמר המן, בלבו למי יעקות המלך לעשות יקר יותר ממני? ויאמר המן אל המלך היד אשר המלך חפץ בקרו ויעשם המלך אשרוש מעש על הארץ ויהיה הים וכל מעשי תקעו וגבורתו ופרשת גדולת מרדכי, אשר גידלו המלך, הלוהם חשובים, על ספר דברי הימים, למלכי מדי ופרס, כי מרדכי היהודי, משנה למלך אחשוורוש, וגדול ליהודים, ורצו הם לבוא ואחיו, גורשו לעמו, בדובר שלום, לכל פרעה. I forgot to announce that during the reading of the uh, scroll of Esther, Megillat's Esther, when we were doing it in the Hebrew and in the English, if you hear certain things, you are supposed to react in certain ways. Tradition tells us that when we say the word Haman or Haman, <laughs> we, we use our, our noisemakers called groggers, or we stamp our feet, or we scream or shout or whatever, because we are blotting out the name of somebody who hated the Jews. If we say the name Mordechai or Esther, we give a little cheer because those are the, those are the winners, uh, the, the sa- the, not the saviors. These are the, those are the, the heroes. Thank you. I, the word was gone. Those are the heroes of the Purim story. So now I'd like to invite up our actors, Barbara B. Adler, who is going to be Queen Vashti, Herb Katz, who is going to be the evil... Hey, man. (laughs) 
Joe Swit, who is a character that was created just for this particular uh, poem spiel, his name is Alfredo. It's, it's actually, he actually has a fuller name. Um, it is uh, Al Al Alfredo Mc McPherson. Is that his name? A Alfredo McPherson McBean. Okay. Mark Rockland, who is Mordechai. Susan Ahern is Esther. Steve Zuckerman is Teresh. Emily Rockland is Big Than. Big Than or Big Tan. And Bruce Kaplan, and I, I'm almost sorry for assigning him this part, is the king. So I am going to I am going to give the microphones. Y'all can come stand over here around me. You don't have to stand over there. Yeah, come on, I'll stay. No, 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 no. You're, I'll stand here. Y'all can just stand around me. But I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the microphone so when it's your turn to speak, you'll have a microphone so people can hear you. Welcome to the book of Esther. Such a story it couldn't be bester. Persia is ruled by Ahasuerus. Rhyming that name doesn't scare us. Because his name is hard, we'd like to shorten. From henceforth, we'll call him Norton. For three years, the king did reign, and basements in Shushan flooded again and again. Now his party has lasted for six months with food and wine and amazing stunts. He calls now for his beautiful wife and gets a shock. The surprise of his life. Vashti, Vashti, Microphone. come and dance. Wiggle, wiggle, waltz, and prance. Come, Vashti, come and join us. My advisor will all inspire. I will not wiggle, Get jiggle, microphone. waltz, or prance. I will not come and do a dance. Come, come, Vashti, don't be hasty. We will find it very tasty. You could dance with a fox. You could dance in your socks. I will not dance in my socks. I will not dance with a fox. I do not wish to dance at all. Do you hear me? Not at all. I will not dance in the moat. I would not, could not dance with a goat. Surely, king, you must be kidding. If you expect me to do your bidding. This deed must not be done. It is interfering with my fun. Vashti, my queen, it is simple. No more will Vashti have her dimple. For this deed, which has turned me red, she has made me angry. She must lose her head. So must Vashti lose her head. Call forth my executioner, Fred. So Vashti did encounter Fred, and in that meeting, lost her head. And without her head, she needs no hat, and that is, they say, is that. The beauty contest comes in the next scene because the king must have a new queen. Scene two. <laughs> king Norton grew not wiser, but a little older. He realized that his bed was colder. Only so much wine could he drink, even if it filled the kitchen sink. If your majesty would find a girl of beauty, you must call upon the people to do their duty. A great contest you shall declare, all must come whose faces are fair. Your orders I will dispatch, and soon you will have your catch. In Shushan there lived a certain Jew. You knew he was coming, didn't you? His name was Mordechai, son of Kish, a seller of locks and Kanish. <laughs> a few more ancestors there are, it's true, but we don't want to be boring you. Esther, his niece, or daughter, or cousin, or whatever, he had brought up ever since she was a pup. Not a nice word for a beautiful girl, pup, huh? Well, a pup is cute, I guess. Esther is whom this story is about, in case you had the slightest doubt. Tell him not that you're a Jew. He might hold his breath and then turn blue. I will not tell him I'm a Jew. I do not want him to turn blue. I will not tell him with a fox. I will not tell him with some locks. I will not tell him on a train. I will not tell him in the rain. All right already. You've made your point. 
now go now, and your head anoint. And the girls came before the king, and he did laugh and shout and dance and sing. This contest I know will have a winner. She will be the one to make me dinner. But some of these girls are quite a fright. Let this not be a hard day's night. Esther before came before the king at night, and the things she did made him feel all right, G-rated. So she became the royal queen, leaving the other girls with envy green. Meanwhile, Mordechai sat in the gate. For news of Esther, he did wait. Two plotters against the king do I hear? I shall go hide in this barrel of beer. Does the king give us not to drink? Perhaps a cheap wine, you would think. All we get is beer? That's awful. When I drink it, I feel all <coughs> coughful. It's even worse than I feared. Tonight it tastes like someone's beard. Upon King Norton, let us lay our hands. We'll tie him and bind him with thick rubber bands. When Mordecai from the barrel did crawl, he could not walk but only fall. The beer had left him drunker but wiser. He went to Esther to advise her. Big Than and Teresh were hanged upon a tree. They hung up there for all to see. In our next chapter, the villain shows he will come before it snows. The next chapter in our plan is, of course, Green Eggs and Hey Man. <laughs> chapter 3. Perhaps I am only in a lull, but breakfast has become quite dull. Oh, to have something new to eat, that would be a wondrous treat. Yo, King, uh, I mean your majesty, I have the solution for what to eat after your ablution. Green eggs and pork make a wondrous treat. They are so very good to eat. You can eat them at your table. You can eat them when you're able. Green eggs, green eggs, they're so good. Eat them up. You really should. Green eggs, Heyman? Boo! I do not know. They seem to me much more for show. Can I eat them with my wine? Can I eat them when I dine? Can I eat them with some pork? Even when I pop a cork? You can eat them with your wine. You can eat them when you dine. You can eat them with some pork, even when you pop a cork. Green eggs and pork are good most anywhere. You do not even need to share. Under soon, sun... <laughs> Under sun and moon or with a loon, you can eat them late or soon. You can eat them with a spoon. You can eat them in May or June. You can eat them with your steak or with the bread your cook does bake. Green eggs and pork are so versatile. Wrong page. <laughs> you can eat them all the while. Green eggs are good, I am convinced. But do I need to have them rinsed? No matter that, I appoint you now my new advisor anyhow. For green eggs be grand vizier. A great reward was never here. Questions more I'll ask you later. For now, you may be a celebrator. And so Haman. <laughs> that guy was quite thrilled more than having someone killed. Out of the palace, his walk did quicken. That's why he has a scooter. And so our plot begins to thicken. Place your noses on the ground. There's a new vizier in town. No challenge will I ever brook, not even from the green egg cook. Bow down, bow down all around. To me, your only sense must be given, or you will wish that you were shriven. To you I will not bow my head, not even if you turn bright red. But I will sell you some fish if you would like a tasty dish. Green eggs and lots would be a treat. It would be so good to eat. Green eggs and pork, that's the dish. Far better than your smelly fish. How now, bow now, I order you, or you will find yourself in deep doo-doo. Bow now, bow now, I will not do, even if you're turning blue. 
how now, how now, I will not bow, not even to a big brown cow. And though it might make you laugh, not even to a golden calf. As for your green eggs and pork, they will not sell in old New York. <laughs> and so Haman was filled with... And so that guy was filled with rage, for Mordechai his anger did engage. Upon all the Jews who would vent his wrath, he would vent his wrath until he could not do the math. The lot he cast fell upon Adar, which was not too close and not too far. But before he could fulfill his mission, he did seek the king's permission. Haman. Sent out his orders to the landlords and the borders. The orders were signed with the ring of the king, the ring which could do most anything. From all the Jews down in Jewville there arose such a wailing, as if a hundred brisses had an unfortunate failing. <laughs> and chapter 4, scene. When Mordechai knew what had been done, he knew that it could be no fun. Alone then he sat in ashes, making little dots and dashes. Because he did not have a horse to Queen Esther, he wrote in Morse. My uncle moans and screams and cries. Could he be bothered by horse flies? This mystery I must unravel before I stuff my ears with gravel. Narrator, to my uncle, quickly go. Hurry, hurry, do not be slow. If he continues to weep and wail, I may have to stick my head in a pail. I weep and moan and wail that you might come soon without fail. The king has a new grand vizier. You can tell that he was here. Now have you heard the awful news that he plans to kill the Jews? Haman. Boo! <laughs> hopes that he may come and kill us all. He will slay us all by fall. Dear Esther, do tell the king his ring can do most anything. Perhaps if he is somewhat drunker, he will forget all about this clunker. I heard you speak, and let me say, I may not go before the king this day. To go before him unannounced is to have your doom pronounced. Only the stewards with their wine may come before him without a sign. If Haman... Boo! evil plot comes to fruition, then you must pay your tuition. Your head will fall with all the rest. You cannot hide in your nest. The king is a drunkard, that's a fact. Approach him now with guile and tact. If you choose to, do, to nothing do, no doubt you will perish too. Salvation still may yet arise, but you will not live to see the prize. Let us not end the show. Before the king I will go, but first I must ask a favor, albeit one you will not savor. Go for three days now and fast, and pray that, that, pray that I do not breathe my last. That Esther might stand by her man, a visit to the king was her plan. But would he hold forth his scepter, showing that he would accept her? You do not need to shout, in the next chapter you will find out. I tell you now, this is true. In the next chapter, Horton hears, excuse me, Norton hears a Jew. <laughs> Scene. To see the king, it is now time. Perhaps Esther is wearing lime. Or maybe she will be a mime and serve to him a rib that's prime. This could be lime, mime, prime time, or perhaps she has the sense to bring a dime, making it lime, dime, mime, prime time, which would assuredly be a crime. But let us see if he'll accept her. Will he hold out his golden scepter? Or if he does not hold out his scepter, will the guards come to arrest her? Who is that who does come near? Whose feet are those that I do hear? I hope that you will spare my life, for it is none other than your wife. More wives I have than I can count. They live in my palace by the fount. Because I do not wish to scare them, I keep them safely in a harem. It does give me pleasure without measure to reveal that I have this treasure. It is my pleasure treasure measure. Which wife are you who is about? 
Why ever did you dare to come out? You would not be little Hester. No, your majesty, I am Queen Esther. Of course it is Queen Esther. I like you more than all the rest are. Indeed, you may approach my throne, but do not ask me for a loan. Half my kingdom can be yours, from Ethiopia to the northern shores. What is it that brings you out? Why do you roam and walk about? I have something for you to savor if I have in your eyes found favor. Your majesty, please let us dine. You, me, Haman. Boo! And a lot of wine. There will be drinks that we all will drink, and some of these drinks might even be pink. Yes, a pink drink we will drink, although never from the kitchen sink. And when we truly all have had our fill of wine, then truly we'll all feel really quite fine. Esther, I will attend your party. By the end, I'll be quite dotty. What better a thing could there be to do than to drink pink wine with Haman? Boo! And you. But what sort of wines can we find that are pink? Could it be a white Zinfandel? I'll ask with a wink. Zin is red, Zin is red. Please try to keep that in your head. To serve a Zinfandel that is white would be a most horrific fright. Zin is red, Zin is red. Remember that when you go to bed. And in the morning, when you wake, remember it upon the lake. Champagnes we can find that are pink. There will be plenty there to drink. Haman! Boo! <laughs> I have news to make your day, for which you will not even have to pay. Tonight we shall enter a party. We shall attend the party, for which Queen Esther did just the party. But before we both to go, there is something I must know. It is a thing so very small, it is not so very tall at all. What do you think of green eggs and knish? Isn't that a tasty dish? I can eat them on a boat. I can eat them with a stoat. Or perhaps I can eat them with a goat while we play croquet by the moat. Or if you do not like knish, what would you think of some nice smoked fish? Now there's a thought, green eggs and herring too. It would be most certainly lead to daring do. Why would your majesty want to do daring even to do it with a herring? Do not eat green eggs and knish, not even with some salty fish. Though I might go from bad to verse, Though I might go from bad to verse, I can imagine nothing worse. Green eggs and locks will tear your socks. And if you eat green eggs and knish, you will turn into a gish. What's a gish? If it's a made-up word. What? It's a made-up word. <laughs> it rhymes. If green eggs and pork are not to your taste, that is certainly an awful waste. But taken from my dear old Graham, you still can try green eggs and spam. Now, Haman <laughs> and the king went to Esther's room and did some weaving, but not on a loom. The party went far into the night. The pink wine champagne was quite a sight. Esther, Esther, my queen Esther, there is no one I like bester. Half my kingdom can be yours from Ethiopia to the northern shores. Before my tongue gets tangled royally, I think that I shall eat this doily. <laughs> Tell me what it is you ask while you still had, are still in my favor bath. Your majesty, I will smile and raise a dimple, for my request is rather simple. I know that you did eat so hearty, but tomorrow come to another party. More fine wine will I serve, such as you and Haman. Boo! Do, do deserve. Then I will tell you what I wish after you've had a tasty dish. So that guy, Haman, <laughs> left to go to his home, which rhymes with Alaska, or at least with Nome. But when he walked out through the gate, he was not the only one out late. Good evening, Mr. Haman. <laughs> Boo! Would you like some lovely salmon? Can I offer you some fish 
or perhaps green eggs with its nib. The cellar of Lox and Knishy, I should have known there was something fishy. You did sell the king his fishes and suggest to him outrageous dishes. It is you, I should have guessed, you'll not much longer be a pest. I do not like my wares to crow. Can I offer you some row? Why did you do it? Why, why, why? Tell me now or else you'll die. My reasons may not make the cut, but I did it for the halva. <laughs> Am I supposed to talk yet to that? Yes, go. <laughs> You, you think you are so very daring to give to the king a pile of herring? You are nothing but a clod. When I'm done, you will be shrod. That's the past perfect tense of... <laughs> Your threats I have not truly felt. In fact, I would say they really smelt. You may think that I'm a Ghana, but it's your screeching that's out of tuna. If, in fact, you were a crooner, you would be an out-of-tuna gonna crooner. <laughs> and here it is written of the great beer bash with the evil Big Thin and Tarash, who didn't have heads anymore, and how Mordechai their party did crash. Mordecai the king's life did save, and he did not even get a shave. Mordecai, who sells the fishes? I do so like his knishes. We should give him a prize. It will be a great surprise. It would be so very sordid if he were go quite unrewarded. But now I have been given I have been up all night and worked up quite an appetite. Haman <laughs> is in the outer court. Shall I him to you escort? How to reward Mordecai? That's the question. Perhaps Haman Boo! We'll have a suggestion. <laughs> fetch him, fetch him, bring him in. Then let breakfast for us both begin. If you would avoid the doc's exam, you should eat green eggs and spam. Try a little, just a gram. It will not give you gout, but that is not what I came to talk about. Right now, I have a question, and I'm in need of your suggestion. There was a man I have ignored, but now I would give him a reward. Pray tell me true, what should I do? The king's tummy may be three sizes too large, but Haman <laughs> ego needs a small barge. Other than Haman, <laughs> who would the king honor? He guessed wrong and will soon be a goner. Let him be taken through the town wearing fine clothes and a crown that belong to yourself, the king, not just any old chintzy thing. It would be a tour de force if he would ride the king's own horse. And in front of the horse there should mince none other, none other than a noble prince. Let him yell and shout it out, just what this show is all about. Your wisdom spouts like a geyser. I'm glad that you are my advisor. Of all that you have said, let it be done. Mordecai is the lucky one. But I would not like you to be bored. You, too, deserve a fitting reward. Of this idea, you were the source. So you may go and hold the horse. And scene, chapter 7. The king and Haman <laughs> came to dine at Esther's party with lots of wine, with dishes of fishes and meats that were rare. Esther did serve the king with great care. With fine wines and rich foods, it was quite the royal feast. Esther even fed to the king the roast beast. Though it seems incredible, they say, the king's tummy grew three sizes that day. This meal is fine. I walked the line. There was something quite auspicious about a dinner so delicious. But in my chicken soup, something floats. Could it be a bunch of little boats? Or tiny men wearing strange coats? 
your soup has no boats nor divers with coats, I'll give you the scoop. There are matzo balls in your soup. A matzo ball seems hardly credible. Is the rest of the matzo also edible? A matzo is not a beast, only some bread that's missing some yeast. My lovely, dear, and sweet Queen Esther, whom I like best than all the rest. Half my kingdom will be yours, from India to the western shores. Can I give you your spirits a lift and award you some gift? There is but one gift you can give to your wife. If your majesty pleases, please spare my life, my life and those of uncles, friends, and cousins, for we all are to be slain by the dozens. We are to be slain by an importunate knave. I cannot serve you pink champagne from the grave. What is this? <laughs> what is this? What is the name of this murderous swine? I'll teach him to interfere with my wine. And who are those people this man wants to kill? He will soon find he will fail in his drill. I am not trying to pay any dues. I do not want to be singing the blues, but this evil man would kill all the Jews. How dare he think to slay my wife and Mordecai who saved my life. Tell me now and tell me true. Who is this villain who would slay every Jew? The villain I fear is right here in this room. It is Haman. Boo! Who so cruelly pronounces our doom. What? Haman? Boo! Is an evil villain. No wonder I never saw him late to villain. <laughs> I, had, I had to pause for the laugh. I'm you sorry. had to pause, it was good. I had to pause for the laugh. Haman! Boo! Have you any words to say? Or perhaps you should go off and pray. Your ma Majesty, there's been no grave error. I did not intend to cause any terror. My orders did not order the Jews to be killed, but rather than they should be excited and thrilled. I would not harm your wife, nor Mordecai, who saved your royal life. Why not to give you too many shocks? But I even like to eat yummy green eggs and lox. Did not your order say to kill them on a certain day? Signed by your hand, but sealed with my ring. The ring which can do most anything. The king was quite angry and he was all confused. He stood there and thought with his brain feeling all bruised. Then he stormed from the room without calling a groom and went to walk out yonder but slowly because he had so much to ponder. As Haman <laughs> began his innocence to cry, who should walk in but a very strange guy? I am Alfredo McPherson McBean, and I have built a wondrous machine with ropes and trap doors for falling through floors, a noose that is tight, and at a great height. Supports that are strong and beams that are long. You can even roast marshmallows before your gallows. Why did you a gallows build? With whose head is the noose to be filled? His machines has no gooses. I ordered a nooses. I ordered a home for some gooses. Then Alfredo McPherson McBean made a small little tut as he walked across the room with a McPherson strut. There is no room for a goose in my very fine noose. The man who is to die is a Jew named Mordecai. Haman gave the order. Boo! So that Mordecai, he could mortar. It will really make my day if I could collect my pay. No more do you need say. It is clearly Haman. Boo! Who will pay? Let us go roast some marshmallows as we hi hang Haman Boo! on his gallows. Chapter 8. Orders written and sealed with the king's ring, the ring that can do most anything, are then written as though cast in stone. They cannot be changed even by the man on the throne. 
This presented a problem most grave if the Jews they were to save. Haman Boo! turned out to be a louse. Let me give to you his house. And if you think it would be grand, you can even take his land. Your majesty is so very kind, but there is one thing you must mind. Haman's Boo! orders do still stand. Somehow we must those orders remand. That is a problem. That is true. But I know just what to do. Mordecai, you may take my ring, the ring that can do most anything. Grand Vizier, I appoint you now. I am sure you'll handle the problem somehow. I am such a successful king because I delegate most everything. Could we not just simply say those last orders we need not obey? Alas, that we cannot do, lest we mire our legal system in glue. The orders written with my ring, the ring that could do most anything, <laughs> can, cannot be changed even by the king. As the orders stand, now all the Jews will be smitten. But what could we do if new orders were written? With such a brilliant idea, who needs the prince of Medea? New orders will I write, giving all Jews the right to fight. And I will seal those orders with the king's ring, the ring that can do most anything. We will write the orders every which way so that the people will know what we say. We will write them in Farsi, but not with, uh, but not with some parsley. We will write them in Aegean and Indo-European. We will write them in Hebrew and Yiddish, and perhaps even in Old Glen Fittich. We will surely not forget to write them down in high Sanskrit. If it should be to your liking, you can even write them in Viking. I believe that would be Norse. Perhaps we should also write them in Morse? Then we'll send out the orders by horse and by camel and by every other available hoofed mammal. We'll send them by rider and strider and runner and even by walker and talker and punner. Each state that is Persian will receive its own version. Each Jew in the land will know where they stand. The tale of Haman. Boo! We must remember from January through December. This story must still be told when we have all died and gone to mold. And so Mordecai and Esther wrote the story so that it could grow old and hoary of this tale that did take place and the enemy they had to face. They did not tell how the king was hashasty and cut off the head of his wife, Vashti. But she is in the story anyway, and she simply <laughs> will not go away. They wrote how Haman... cast a lot to set in motion his evil plot. But Mordecai did to Queen Esther say, we have a problem we must solve by yesterday. Then Esther did invite the king to dine with her and Haman. <laughs> and a lot of wine. Esther begs the king to spare her life because after all, she is his wife. She asks as well for every Jew she wants the king to spare them too. The king learns that Haman is the villain she seeks to, who seeks to do all the killing. Upon his own gallows was Haman <laughs> hanged high while the king enjoyed some apple pie. Mordecai became the new advisor because he was so very much wiser. New orders were then carefully written so the Jews would not be smitten. The Jews now had the legal right to stand against their foes and fight. So it was written and recorded. Copies were spread. They were not hoarded. The 14th of Adar was that day that Haman <laughs> sought all the Jews to slay. But his evil plot was turned on its head, and he it was who ended up dead. The end. Can I get a special round of applause for all of the actors? Thank you. Now you can go back to your seats. What? Oh, I broke my arm playing softball.
Okay, so the only thing that we have left to do is hang out and have fun. So Rachel, on behalf of the uh, Ritual Worship Committee, will be leading us in Kiddush and Motzi when we go into the social hall. Everybody who is in this room is invited to join us for some wine or grape juice, whichever you prefer, and some other beverages and lots of tasty foods. You must absolutely, especially if you've never had one before, try the Hamantaschen. They are amazing and the best thing that we have at all. So Shabbat Shalom, Chag Purim Sameach, and we'll see you in the other room. If you have a grogger, who has the bags? Please take your groggers and put them on the back table on your way into the social hall. Thank you so much. Shabbat Shalom.